This is a product highlight video of AirLogic's filtered intake. So filtered intakes are used in a variety of different industries. You certainly have one or two in your car, filtering out the air coming into your engine or the air coming into your cabin. They're used in industrial applications all over the place. Uh, at AirLogic, we make these small uh, miniature filtered intakes. And so this will just be a product highlight video going over all the different options and applications that we have for our product. All right, so we'll just do a quick overview uh, of all these products here. So this is uh, the filtered intake. It's got a barbed connection. That's what's gonna go to your system. That's where you're gonna be drawing the fluid into. And then the open side here uh, has some specialized geometry. It almost looks like a castle. Most of these filters, uh, they get pushed up against a flat surface. So when they get pushed up against there, you still want a path for the, the fluid or the air to get into. So that, that's what's going on on this side. We put different uh, filter mesh sizes in there uh, and different barbed fittings and uh, do some flow control stuff. So we'll go over that in this, in this video, talk about different applications. One thing about this is these uh, are gonna have different names depending on what applications they go into. So I wanted to show some different applications and talk about the different names uh, of this product you might run into. First, let's talk about a dip tube filter. This is uh, like an application for a dip tube filter where you have a bottle um, a, a dip tube is, is what people will call the straw. It, it's dipping down into the liquid. Uh, and then we have the filter down here at the bottom. You can see that the, the filter is pushed up against the bottom of the surface. Uh, and that's important because, one, obviously, you, you want to use up all the uh, liquid or whatever's inside your bottle, if, whether you're spraying it or if you're pumping it out. You want, you want to use what, whatever's in there. But also, there, depending on what chemical you have in there, you might be under some type of uh, governmental regulation about how much liquid you have to get out before this is considered empty. So you can imagine some type of regulated substance that's in there, and if you have to get this down to, let's say, 2% of the maximum capacity before it's empty, before it can get thrown away. Uh, in some industries, if, if you're not fully empty, then you have to have a special waste stream, um, dedicated waste stream for whatever the, the residual is in here, um, and that can be uh, costly. So certainly want to use up everything uh, that's in that bottle. And the way we achieve that is you use a stiff straw. So this is a pretty stiff uh, tube here. And it's just a little bit longer than the, the direct distance here. And then that's gonna put some pressure on the bottom uh, of this filter. So it's, it's pushing up against the bottom of the bottle and that's gonna give you that maximum uh, amount of liquid uh, used out of the bottle here. So that's an overview of a dip tube filter. So here's another application. Uh, this one, instead of liquid here, now we're talking about air. So this is a vacuum generator. So with these, you know, you, you supply uh, pressurized air through the blue line here, and then exhaust out this side. And then on this port, you're gonna get um, a vacuum signal. And so it's gonna be drawing air in. And so you might wanna filter that air out so that you don't clog up the, the venturi that's inside here. And then you can tee off this and go to maybe some equipment or some sensor uh, where you wanna be doing whatever it is in your equipment. But here, like I said, just a simple way to, uh, to filter that air out in a pneumatic application. Okay, so I also wanted to briefly mention a suction strainer. Suction strainers are a lot like uh, a dip tube filter, but usually with a suction strainer, you're not so concerned about getting every single drop out of the bottle. So in those applications, you might have a straw going down, but it might be loose, so that filter might be pointing in all different directions. Or the, the filter in those applications, it might stay in a tank, let's say. So you can imagine like a, a small gas tank on a small engine. Um, that has one of these filters inside of it to make sure um, no, no debris is getting sucked in. And then you could also have a, a finer filter down the line um, that, that's for fine particulates. So this might be a coarse filter at the end of a, uh, as a suction strainer and then a fine filter down the line. And then you have uh, two filters kind of working in tandem there in those systems. So I just want to go over quickly what a suction strainer was. So we've, we've talked over the different applications for these filters. Let's talk about specifying one uh, in your device or your application. So there's a couple of considerations. First, what you should always start with is the mesh size. So there you're concerned about what size of particle or particulate are you trying to protect your system from? So here we have um, something very coarse. This is a 500 micron screen. This is going to filter out very coarse um, debris. You know, you think of something you could you know, pick up with your finger, you know, this would probably catch. We have filters that go all the way down to five micron. That's you know, like a speck of dust in the air you know, that it's gonna filter out. And there's always a trade-off with filters. So the, the finer you go, 
uh, the more resistance you're going to have. I'm trying to draw through that, you know, from a, a fluid dynamic standpoint. And then also the, the quicker it's going to get clogged up. So you don't want to over filter your system. Um, and you don't want to under filter your system. If, if there's a certain uh, sensor or valve in your system that has to be protected to seal correctly or to perform, you want to make sure you're filtering out the debris um, that's going to protect those devices. So um, start with your mesh size, get that figured out. Like I said, we, we have a range on these products. We, we customize them for customers. So if you don't see the filter size uh, you need on our website, um, you know, talk to us and, and we'll get you one that works for your system. So then after, after you have the, uh, the mesh size figured out, next uh, you're going to want to think about the barb size. So here, uh, the most common one is eighth inch. Uh, this, this size tubing is used uh, in all sorts of different industries from um, you know, spray bottles to automation tubing all, all over the place. But maybe that tubing isn't right for you. We got some bigger barb sizes. Uh, this, this one is specifically for like really high viscous fluids um, that maybe uh, they don't want to get drawn through there. You think of something like a, like a honey. Um, it's going to be hard to draw through a, a small barb size, so then we have a larger barb sizes here. So then after you have your, your mesh size figured out and your barb size, next you want to think about uh, material selections. Uh, generally, we make all these out of polypropylene. It's very chemically resistant, uh, compliant in a wide range of industries. Uh, but once in a while, there's a situation where polypropylene doesn't work. Uh, we also have uh, PVDF, or Kynar, some people call it, uh, options that's um, higher priced, more chemically resistant than even polypropylene. Check on the material to make sure that that's going to work for your situation too. Okay, then one more thing you want to think about in your system is do you want flow rate control? Uh, so here we got a couple different orifice sizes that are right on the end of the, the filtered intake. So you might want to use this in certain scenarios where you want to meter out uh, how much you're drawing into the system. Uh, this can really be beneficial if you're trying to um, reduce the size or the cost of a product um, that's maybe in high volume production um, and, and you want to control how much you're drawing into your system. So here we have four different sizes. Uh, we have even a lot more options than that as far as orifice sizes go. That's kind of a specialty application, but um, if you want any help with that, let us know. Uh, we'll help you out with the orifice sizes, um, getting you some samples so that you can uh, dial in the flow rates for your system. So I guess just a little bit more about us then. Um, these, these are our products uh, at AirLogic. We make them here in Racine, Wisconsin. Uh, we customize them for a wide range of industries, both for liquids and for uh, gases. So please uh, reach out. Let us know what you're looking for. Let us know how we can help you. Um, yeah, we'd love to be in contact with you.